hi guys welcome welcome back to my channel this is me alicia if this is your first time here and if not welcome back all right i have tried several times probably since the end of october to sit down and record this video and i haven't been successful <laughs> Um, only because you guys probably, I don't know if you can tell or not, but I don't like to cry on camera. I just, it's very vulnerable and I just don't like to do that. So when I feel myself crying, I'm like, nope, we'll try this again, we'll try this again. But I told myself, I made a point or a promise to myself to tell the story before the end of the year. Not just so much that it can get out there, but to help a first time mom who might be second guessing herself and might not be trusting her intuition that if something's wrong, then it's probably wrong. Something feels wrong. If you think something's wrong, something's probably wrong. So this is my emergency C-section and how I was able to recover. So let's get into it. Okay, so I wanna first preface this by saying that even though I went through what I went through, I wouldn't take it back for a single day, minute, hour, or second, if that means I don't have my son here with me. So it was a lot that I went through, but I'm forever grateful that he is here. Not only is he here, he is thriving, he is healthy, and that is more than I could have ever asked for. So with that preface, let's just get into it. Okay, a little backstory. I knew that going into when it came time for me and William to have kids that I was going to have to have a C-section. That wasn't something that was thrown like that was thrown at me when I was pregnant I knew because I've been with my same OBGYN for the last decade I knew that based on what was going on with my body that me having a kid vaginally was about a five to ten percent chance um the other 90 percent was going to be towards c-section so my mind going into this pregnancy was always going to be a c-section it's not um something that I was devastated with the news about when I found out I already knew that also, I don't know if you guys can hear him. He's downstairs or he's down the hallway with uh, my husband. So you guys can hear him. He's watching Gracie's Corner and he's just really loud, which is really good because it's now it's making me laugh instead of being upset. So maybe I can actually get through this, <laughs> this video. So yeah, I knew going into it that I was going to have to have a C-section. Okay, pregnancy journey. We found out that we were pregnant actually Christmas of 2021. I don't think I'm gonna pop in a video. I don't think I've ever let anybody see it. No, it's just been me and William. So we found out we were pregnant Christmas day, which is crazy because William had COVID. So William was currently isolated in our bedroom and then I was in the other parts of the house and I was just like bringing him stuff as he needed it. And I had woke up that morning getting ready to head to my sister's house and I got an alert on my phone from the app that I was using to track my pregnancy that or to track my period that my period was to a week and a half late and I'm like that's weird I didn't really it didn't really like dawn on me that much because I've I've been known to miss periods it's just it's the reason why I was on birth control in the first place was to help regulate my period but it was a week and a half late and I was like oh okay so I went on about my business and continuing to get ready and then something was like you probably want to take a test okay fine take a test i'm pregnant i slide it under the door so that william can see it i go or out the house and in the round because our master bedroom opened up to the balcony so i could at least see his face and so i went around so that he could see i could see his face and all this kind of stuff so anyway fast forward we go to the doctor in january it's official i'm pregnant i immediately have to start taking hormones because I did suffer from a miscarriage earlier in 2021 and they just wanted to make sure that the fetus made it out of the first trimester. So I was taking hormones. The only thing that I had an issue with first trimester, I didn't have, is there something in my hair? I keep seeing it and it's distracting me. Yes, sorry guys. Um, so yeah, the first trimester, the only issues that I had, I didn't have morning sickness. I I wasn't nauseous. The only thing that I had was because of the hormones that I was taking, I was extremely, like, extremely bloated. And that's one of the main reasons why I decided to tell Instagram, like, as soon as I got out of my first trimester was because I didn't think I could, like, hide it. Like, I was, like eight nine weeks pregnant and i look four or five months like the bloat was 
absolutely ridiculous. I'm like, there's, I'm not going to be able to function. <laughs> um, luckily, made it out of my first trimester okay. Kiddo did great. I was able to stop taking the hormone injections in my stomach. It didn't return to normal because, of course, I'm pregnant, but I wasn't as bloated as I uh, was as I was you know my first trimester so I was able to continue to kind of work around the house do things of course you guys know me and William bought a new house so we're you know looking for houses and that kind of stuff I was put on a weight limit with my doctor so for those that don't know I used to like to lift really really heavy that was my workout I would I I would do a lot of strength training um, and that was basically non-existent the second that my doctor found that I was pregnant. I went from being able to squat my body weight to be like 10 pounds and I'm like, what am I going to do with 10 pounds? <laughs> but so basically, <coughs> sorry, strength training for me was non-existent, which is fine. I still was able to get some cardio in, walking, all that kind of stuff. So first trimester hormones, kiddo went fine. Second trimester proceeded as normal. I wasn't, like I said, I wasn't able to do my kind of workout. So I did different kinds. I did a lot of pregnancy yoga. Um, I did a lot of walking and that's one of the recovery tips that my doula sent to me. So I knew, like I said, that I was going to have to have a C-section. And anytime I told somebody that the first inclination was, well, well, did you try doula? What did you try with midwife? Like they immediately was like, c-section bad vaginal good and i'm like you you literally don't know I, I i physically cannot my my uterus physically will not dilate to 10 centimeters like if i'm telling you i'm having a c-section i don't need you to give me an alternative and that was one of the main things that i just did not like when i told people that i was having a c-section they was like well have you tried this have you tried that and i'm like leave me alone. I'm not asking you. You are not my vagina, nor my child, nor my husband. I didn't like the unsolicited advice or the unsolicited medical information about a C-section when I'm telling you that's what I'm having. Leave me alone. Anyway, because I did know that I was having a C-section, I did reach out to a postpartum doula and I was, because I've been told that C-sections can really, you're really down for a long time. And y'all know me. I got 10 jobs, I got 1,001 things to do. I really did not want to be down for six to eight weeks at a time. So I started reaching out to different doulas around Birmingham to kind of get their advice on what can I do now, what can I do you know, later, what can I do in the future to help my recovery. So she gave me a couple of tips. I'm going to, I did get her okay with her. She asked me not to say her name, so I'm not going to give her name. Um, but she, she did say that I can give some of the tips that she gave to me. So one of the main, um, tips that she gave me was to continue to walk, continue to walk, continue to get the steps in, continue to be active. She, she said that I should aim my second trimester. I should aim anywhere between six to 8,000 steps a day slow walking brisk walk just doing stuff and chores around the house just to make sure that you're getting your steps in so that's something that i made sure that i did every day also she said water 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 and then when you're tired of drinking water water because <laughs> it helps flushes your it helps with your with your body so those are two things that i did relatively early like i said i wanted to say i started those around month four to four and a half of my pregnancy wearing my Fitbit every single day, making sure I'm getting my steps in. I have this big, I'm looking at it because I still do it. I have a really large essential water that I make sure that I drink all of it to make sure that I get half of my gallon of water a day in. She did say limit caffeine and I did. I only was drinking a cup of coffee a day, which for me is a lot because normally I can drink two or three cups and be fine, but I did limit my coffee intake to like one a day. And there were even some days when I, chose to go without it period so i did i did that with an asterisk <laughs> with an asterisk so those are two main things that she did tell me to do and i'm gonna keep looking down on my phone because i have the tips that are here so those are two ones that she said that i could start doing early that i did fast forward third trimester all right so fast forward third trimester everything's going according to plan i'm having to see my OBGYN every week i go in on august the 15th which is on a monday because i normally scheduled my weeklies for monday so i go in on the 15th and um she takes my weight takes my blood all the other things and i sit down and this is where you have to know 
to trust your intuition because by this point you know how often your baby kicks i knew that the kid is normally kind of chill throughout the day he'll he might kick and stuff in the morning and then not really so much in the afternoon but towards the evening oh he's oh he's up he's up and he's kicking and so you just kind of know a pattern of how often your baby's going to be kicking you know their routines and so when i went in on the 15th i was like he really hasn't been as active as he normally is at night, but I don't think I should say anything. And I said, you know what? No, I'm going to say something because this is my first kid and I'd rather them tell me, you know, nothing's wrong than for me not to say anything and then something be wrong. So I told them, um, at the, I told the nurse, they said, okay, well, make sure you tell that I'm going to tell the doctor, but make sure you tell her. So I told the doctor, she's like, oh, okay, well, you know, we're going to edge on the side of precaution and we're going to give you a stress test. So go get the stress test and I can just tell by the way, like I know how long a stress test, you must be really, well you must be changing him. I, I'm pretty sure you guys can hear him by now. Yeah, Williams must be, his nursery is like right across, just right across the hallway. Anyway, so I know how long a stress test is normally supposed to take because I've I've seen it before. So it's taking her a little longer. She's like, okay, well, give me a minute. Let me go talk to, let me go give the results to the doctor. The doctor comes back in. My doctor says, okay, um, I didn't love what I saw on your stress test. So I'm going to take you to get an ultrasound just to check and make sure baby boy's doing great. And umbilical cord is where it's supposed to be. There, There's enough fluid in there. I said, okay. So now I'm like, I'm a little nervous. Uh, William's out of town. And uh, I'm texting William. He was like, do I need to fly back? I was like, just let me go to get the ultrasound and then let me see where we are. Go get the ultrasound. Baby's just fine. He's just he's just sleepy. He's just sleepy. They put me on the ultrasound. I don't know. I think I was on that ultrasound for like 10 or 15 minutes. Baby ended up being just fine. There's enough fluid. He was just tired. I said, okay, I'm glad I mentioned it. There ended up being nothing moving right along. So go ahead and we schedule my C-section for the, 20, the 39th week, which would have been August the 26th. Schedule it for that morning. Um... Uh, and so we're, let me go check on my child. I'll be right back. Hey yo. Hey yo. I know. That's what I said. Cause you're so hungry. I know. Do you want to say hey really quick before I get back? He's so hungry. You want to say hey? Oh yes. You gonna let them see you say it. Say hey yo. I was gonna feed them down here. You wanna keep them okay? No, because I'm I'm recording. I'm almost done now. Okay, where were we? Yes, stress test. So stress test, they go get me an ultrasound. Ultrasound is great. Ultrasound is great. I was on the ultrasound for quite a while. They just wanted to make sure that there was enough fluid. They they somehow were able to calculate the fluid and all that kind of stuff. Going out for it, they just said, okay, he might just be changing his patterns, getting ready for his arrival because we are doing a C-section, not that Friday, but the following Friday. I said, okay, no worries. So that went great. I go in on the next Monday, which is the 22nd. Uh, same thing. At this point, you get used to it. They call your name. You <laughs> have to give them a urine sample. They check your weight. They check your blood pressure. They check baby's monitor. They check baby. Doctor comes in. She kind of gives you um, a, a, what did you call Like uh, an update on where, you know, you are and kind of gives you like an overview of what the c-section is going to entail normally i've been told normally they check you to see if you are dilated or not um i knew that that's not something that she was going to have to do because like i said my body doesn't really dilate to for lack of better words so did that monday after i went to the appointment um i went and got my medicare my pedicure and then i went over to my sister's house and we were just relaxing and all that kind of stuff didn't pay much attention to it until i get home and i'm doing my nighttime routine and this is when he's normally the most active is when i am winding down for the night shutting the house down doing my skincare routine showering when i when he's like normally moving and it didn't hit me until i lay down in the bed i'm like I haven't really felt him move as much or at all. I was like, what's, 
Okay, I was like, okay, well maybe, maybe he's just changing his patterns. But one thing I know, two things for sure, is I'm gonna get up at least twice a night to use the bathroom because he stays on my bladder because that's when he's moving. Even though I can't feel him moving, he's moving around my bladder. So I knew that I was gonna get up at least twice a night to pee. I was like, okay, no worries. I'm gonna go to bed. Husband was getting up really early that next day. I wanted to say he had to fly out at like six. So he had slept in the guest, one of the guest rooms upstairs. So I was by myself um, downstairs. And if I went to bed, probably around like 10, I woke up. And when I woke up, I looked at the clock and it said 4.15. And I'm immediately, I'm immediately scared shitless because I know I should have gotten up twice to pee already and I have not. Why is he not moving? So I get on the edge of the bed. Like I, I wake up and I get on the edge of the bed. And I'm trying to like, I'm like pressing my stomach to see if he's moving and he doesn't move. And now I'm, now I'm scared shitless. I call the one, I call the emergency number. She says, okay, well we're gonna uh, reach out to the doctor on call who is not my doctor. We're gonna reach out to the doctor on call and we'll get back with you. As soon as I hung up with her, I was like, I'm not waiting. I go upstairs, I wake William up. I'm at this point, I am I'm crying. I'm I'm not I'm not comprehensive because I'm just like I cannot hold on, I'm gonna cry. One second. Alright. So back to it. So I go upstairs, I tell William, I said, Hey, something's wrong, he's not moving. We're go like something's wrong. William immediately gets up. Well, I've never seen William get up so fast in my entire, he hopped out of bed. And this is someone who's not, William is not a morning person at all. Like he, it's the reason why he has a job that's remote. He can work up until wee hours of the night, but him waking up early is a problem. He jumped up so fast. We were, we were out of the door in like 30 seconds to a minute. We luckily stay less than I don't know four minutes away from the hospital so we get to the emergency room and um I, I'm trying to I'm trying to tell them it's like you know what's going on I'm I, I can barely breathe so they said I finally tell them you know I you know I'm supposed to be having my c-section on Friday woke up this morning I don't feel him kicking he did wake me up last night to pee I'm freaking out so they get me on the, they get me on the monitor and um I'm trying not to like freak out and they asked you know who my doctor was and so I told them my doctor and they said okay well so and so is on call tonight so we're gonna call so and so I was like I've already called the emergency room they said they were gonna get to talk to the doctor on call I just I just had to come here I have to make sure he's okay please hurry up and put the monitor on me so they put the monitor on me and the second that I hear his heartbeat and it's like 140 something I immediately start to relax I'm like like I felt like I had been holding my breath since 4.15 when I woke up that morning and I was able to eventually like calm down. So they put him on the monitor and he was on the monitor, I don't know, for maybe four or five minutes. And at that point, <laughs> the security guard comes up to us because we parked, William parked in the ambulance park, like getting me as close to the door as possible. So a security guy comes up, he says, hi, do you, you know, are you driving and so-and-so? He's like, yeah, that's my car. Oh, well, can you, you know, come put it in a parking spot? You know, there's, you know, you're an ambulance parking. Okay, fine. So, um, William goes downstairs. While William is downstairs, I'm just trying to relax and I look up and his heart rate goes from 140 something down to 75. And it only does it for like 10 seconds. And then it goes back up and I'm like, that's weird maybe it was just an anomaly because I was trying to like move around so maybe it was just the way that I was moving and then wait a second one second so yeah heartbeat goes from 141 down is down to 70 something I'm I'm like okay maybe that's just an anomaly as William is coming back in the emergency at back in the room where I was his heart rate then goes from 140 down to 60 something and it stays there for a minute. And I'm like, that is weird. What is going on? I was like, I don't think that's, I was like, I told him, I was like, I don't think that's normal. And before I had a chance to say normal, nurses 
anesthesiologist, like everybody comes into my room. Okay, Alicia, we're gonna have to take this baby and we're gonna have to take him now. He's fine, but we're gonna have to get him while he's okay. And they, they're putting on all these things on my wrist and whoever got my IV, she put that IV in my hand so fast. I had, I had no clue what was in there. Put the IV in there. She's making me sign these forms to make sure she's making William sign the form just in case and talking about, you know, you know, we'll discuss next steps in case it doesn't work out. And, and now I'm like, I'm hyperventilating. I'm hyperventilating and I cannot function and I cannot breathe. Like I am, I am losing it. I'm having a panic attack. They're trying to get me to calm down. I cannot calm down. William calls the one person who can calm me down. And that's my younger sister, because if she can't calm me down, I can't be calmed down. He calls her. He says, hey, um, something's going wrong, but they're going to have to do an emergency C-section because um, the anesthesiologist came in. He said, you know, we're going to we're going to try to do the, the, the spinal tap. If not, we're going to have to knock you out if we're going to have to get if we're going to get the baby out. You know, it just depends on what kind of emergency the doctor's looking for. But and that was like. I want to say the anesthesiologist came in the first time two or three five or ten minutes after I got in the ER and said well it looks like you're having the baby today and kind of took me through this the process and he came in because the doctor on call hadn't got in yet and so he kind of was taking me through the process and was like there's two ways we're going to be able to have a c-section the normal route that most people take you get a spinal tap it takes a couple minutes to work we will you back we get you prepared and then your husband comes in and then we get the baby out you see the baby yada 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 you're awake you're alert you know blase blase happy 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 or there's a situation where it's an emergency i take you to the or room you're talking to me on you know second five and second six you're completely knocked out because we have to get the baby out those are the two different ways so that happened earlier so when all of these nurses and stuff came in the anesthesiologist came right behind her she said you know you know what miss Geddes, we're gonna have to get this baby out so we're gonna go with option b i'm gonna knock you out you're not gonna feel a thing you're just gonna wake up now nah, i'm like okay my god i'm gonna in my head something was wrong with the both of us and when they gave william the papers i thought he they were going to have to he was going to have to choose In my head, I thought William was going to have to choose which one he wanted to keep alive. So, I'm nervous. My, my William calls my sister. She's trying to calm me down. Hey, you're going to be fine. The William asked me, to, William's like, you know, telling her what happened. And she's like, listen, it just looks like the baby's running out of oxygen to breathe. So, they're going to go ahead and take him now while he still has some oxygen left. Because that's why his his heart rate keeps going up and down is because he's just struggling to breathe right now so they're just going to go ahead and take him down rather than going through the whole process calm down you're going to be okay you're going to be fine they put things on me and as they're willing me to the emergency room i see my doctor the doctor that i've been with for years and i just i just calm down so much because in my head i don't know anybody i you're used to the LBGYN nurses. You don't see them because they work in the office, not in the hospital. I was told there was a different doctor on call. And so I'm not used to that doctor. I have a different, I have an anesthesiologist who I've never met. So I'm going into the OR and I don't know any of these people. They don't know me. They don't know my history. They know my paperwork. They know what my charts say, but they don't know, know me. They don't know William's name. They don't know how long we've been waiting to have. They don't, they know nothing about me. And and they're trying they're now going to put my kid and my life in their hands and I'm just I am I'm having a come apart and the second they will me in the OR and I see her I just like if you guys could feel the rush of relief that I felt when I saw her because now I know okay she knows my history she knows my history. She knows what we went through. She's going to do her damnedest to make sure that we're okay. So I go in. She says, hey, Alicia, they called me. 
I know there was a different doctor on call, but but we've been waiting for this for for nine years. So I had to be the one to bring him to bring him on this side. Are you ready? I'm like, yes, I'm ready. And she's like, okay, count down from ten, and they're gonna, you know, she he's gonna knock you out. I was like, it's not gonna work, and that's all I remember. I remember nothing after that. I remember I remember them saying, there's no way you're gonna knock me out in ten seconds, okay? And I not feel a thing, and you have to slice my stomach open. And I, I feel like there's not an epidural. There's nothing. There's there's nothing you're gonna give me that's gonna knock me out in 10 seconds y'all I was gone I was gone I don't I don't remember nothing I remember telling my doctor there's no way he's gonna be able to knock me out gone I was out next thing I wake up I'm in the recovery room there is my um husband there is my younger sister because he knew that I needed I needed her um I needed to see her and then I see my uh, my child in the bin and I'm just whew, okay it's good it's great um, and then we go to the recovery and 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 you know it's you know now here we are four months later that is my story um, I say all that to say had I woke up at four o'clock and I'd have been like all right well he's not moving but I just had a stress test last Monday they said his habits might have changed and I would have went back he wouldn't be here. My doctor made it very clear. She was like, I'm not trying to scare you, but I know you like to keep it real. Had I not came in, when I came in, I would have been having a stillbirth and not the birth of my son. And so what I will say, before I get into the recovery things, we'll get to that in a second. Mothers, whether you're a first time mom, whether you had 10 kids, whether you've had two, if it doesn't feel right, Go to your doctor. If you are second guessing yourself, ask. If you're like, oh, if you're not sure, get clarification. Because when I woke, when I went to bed at night, I should have said, something's not right, let me go to the ER that night. But I was like, you know what? I'm gonna go to bed because I know he's gonna get me up to, to use the bathroom. And when I didn't get up and I popped myself out of bed at four o'clock in the morning, I knew something wasn't right. And I felt like that was God giving me another chance to be like, okay, sis, you really got to go. Like, you should have went at 10 o'clock when you went to bed. You now got to go at 4. And had I not went when we went, we would have a much different present than we have right now. So, I hope that helps someone. Um, I'm going to take a quick break and then we'll get back into the recovery tips that my doctor or my doula gave me to basically help with my speedy c-section recovery all right so i'm back <sighs> i feel better now i ate <laughs> food always helps all right so we're going to do get into these c-section recovery tips and then we're going to end the video and i'm gonna have to go watch a comedy because this is a lot for me. Um, so what I will say first and foremost is that every body, like every body is not the same. Some people recover faster than most. Well, I will, I have heard that if you are active before you're pregnant, if you've been active while you're pregnant, then you have a bigger chance of being, of you have a bigger chance of having a quicker recovery than those who had a sedimentary lifestyle before. So I will say that. Um, also, like I said, every single person is different. So how your body reacts to major surgery is completely different than how the next person is going to react. These are tips that she, she sent me a ton of them, but these are the tips that I follow to I feel like the letter that kind of helped with my recovery. And I will have to say that I felt like I recovered a lot faster than I anticipated. Um, I had my C-section that Tuesday morning um, at about 6.53 exactly a.m. Um, we got out of the hospital that Friday. Um, my son's nursery is on the second floor. I was able to climb steps with no issues. I was able to climb steps. I was in here help packing orders for the business. Um, I wanted to go to my nephew's football game, but my husband was like, under no circumstances are you taking your fresh scarred ass to be in the public eye <laughs> with all them people and all them germs. No. So I, I felt good enough to go to a football game, but I was, I was told it's not happening. But I felt like I recovered faster than I expected, especially when I was telling people, yeah, I'm getting a C-section. Ooh, C-section, me, you're gonna be down for six months. I'm like, 
that's because you were down for six months don't it, everybody's not the same so anyway let's get into the tips i'm really going to read them word for word letter for letter and then we can end this video all right so i mentioned to you guys first um um two weeks well she has two weeks before st surgery start walking as much as possible and this one she says two weeks before surgery aim for about six to si six to seven thousand steps a day um half a gallon of water a day and try to limit caffeine intake as it dehydrates the body those are things you do before so the actual like surgery process um, how is the surgeon closing the scar? Sutures are preferred and helps with the speedy recovery. Ask for those. Um, then she has in parentheses, avoid stitches and staples at all costs. These can put you down for weeks as a time, at a time as they pull on the scar, um, instead of helping with the speedy recovery. Um, also, if you have the questions, I'm probably putting the tips on the video as I am like reading through them but if i'm not putting them here as i'm editing them i will make sure to put them in the description box for those that want to like copy and paste and keep on their own phone for yourself or to give to a family or you know a friend who might have an who might have to have a c-section so moving right along um try to schedule the sur surgery as early as possible before 8 a.m so that your anesthesia has had time to wear off throughout the day um next one the nurses are going to want to keep you are going to want to keep the catheter in all day but let them know that you want to walk at least eight hours post-op make it known before surgery and she says and i can speak there i can be there to speak for you if you would like so you need to walk the day of your surgery like i said i had my surgery at six o'clock i also had general anesthesia so i have been told that general anesthesia sometimes helps is a quicker recovery than the full on process because apparently even with a c-section you still have to get a epidural in your back and that back pain can really hurt and it can really last for most of the day i got a general anesthesia they knocked my ass out i'm assuming with some gas or something so i didn't i didn't feel that back pain when i woke up i was just like generally groggy because i had been out for a couple of hours um but you still want to be able to get up later on that day um i had my c-section like i said around seven o'clock i made it known to the nurse around four to four thirty i want to look to get this catheter out because i'm trying to walk around and she came in um i want to say around 4 45 closer to five o'clock took the catheter out told me that if i did not urinate before the end of the day they'd have to put it back in and so during that time i'm just i'm just drinking water i am drinking water because i do not want that put back in uh, you don't want to put back in you don't not at all uh, not not even a little bit um so you want to make sure that you're drinking enough water because a lot of times if you don't have if you have not urinated before the end of the night they will have to put it back in to make sure that your body is getting regulated so that was something that i made it known for um speaking of getting up once you're up go slow your legs may feel like noodles but use someone for support aim to walk every hour even if it's just to the bathroom um my the hospital that i was in we had a relatively long hallway and i was the room almost at the end so i would just walk the hallway or i'd walk like i started off walking from my bed to the bathroom and then walking back and then i would walk the hallway and then come back so you want to make sure that you're just like up and walking and getting your body regulated um speaking on the catheter once the catheter is out aim for eight ounces of water every hour you need to pee before going to bed or they will insist putting the catheter back in she has it in parentheses you do not capitalize want this so yeah make sure you're drinking enough water drinking enough liquids so that you can urinate before the end of the day um the next couple of days keep up walking around every hour if you can try to go longer and then for the tissue has the hallways and make sure you're feeding your body so this is another thing you want to make sure that you're getting enough food the first three to five days post ops determine your recovery so hydrate and eat and hydrate and eat um next she has avoid showers for the first 48 hours to make sure the scar is healing sponge baths are okay but try not to get the scar completely submerged in water um and then the last one she says wait 24 hours before applying the belly band don't make it too tight but you don't want some pressure i can help adjust when i'm there if needed so those were the tips that she gave to me to kind of really help um some people 
just kind of relax in the hospital just like you know i've been through a lot it's been major surgery i'm just gonna relax and take it easy and i'll focus on my recovery once i get home most people are in the hospital for i know for c-sections three or four nights and so by the time you get home your body's been sitting for three or four days after major surgery like laying in bed or not really moving around so you're really going to have a harder time recovering once you get home if you're at the hospital you've got nurses that can help i feel like they're taking your child every other hour to kind of check this or do this testing or to give a bath or a circumcision and so you have that time when it's just you that you can focus on really trying to get up and get your body hydrated and well fed and nourished to help with the recovery process so like I said, those are them tips that my doula gave to me that I followed word for word. And she really made it known that the activity and what you do during the hospital really can either set yourself up or set yourself back for your recovery once you finally get home. So I hope those res I hope those recovery tips help you. Like I said, be sure to give this video to a friend or a family member who might have to have C-section and let them know a C-section is not the end all be all. You are not going to be up under a bed or up under the covers for six months. It is major surgery. I don't want to underplay it. It is definitely major surgery, but it's not this stigma that I've seen some people give it whenever I say, oh, I'm having a C-section. Ooh, 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 C-section. I'm like, the baby's coming. Whether the baby gets here through my stomach or the vagina, there's a heartbeat. And that's really all I care about. At this point, that's all I care about. However you have to get this baby out, as long as it's healthy, that's all I care about. Shut the fuck up. Uh, talking about the long road to recovery for a C-section. It, 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 in case you haven't realized, it really grinds my gears when people say that. Ugh. So, guys, I hope that this um, video has been informative i hope that it's helped you guys kind of peel back a little layer that is alicia so i hope it's i hope it's helped with that more so the one thing that i really wanted with this video which is why i really wanted to have it up and i made a promise to myself to have it up over the end of the year was that i hope that it is able to um help a woman help a future mother know to trust your intuition. If it's if it feels wrong, if it seems wrong, it might be wrong, but go ahead and get a professional to let you know whether it's wrong or right. And so I hope that that helps someone out there. Um, if you have made it this far in the video and you have not subscribed, please don't forget to subscribe. Also click the notification bell so you don't miss any videos from me. Um, the end of the year is winding down and I feel like this is probably the most uh stressful and successful year for me and for that i am forever grateful for the 106 plus thousand of you guys that have subscribed and tune in um to see all of my shenanigans and so for that i'm forever grateful for you guys for 2022 and i'm excited for next year i'm excited for 23 i'm excited to include more vlogs i'm excited to be including more of my family into my day-to-day -day life with you guys so Thank you. While you're here, guys, go ahead and like, comment, and subscribe, and do all the other things that the other YouTubers tell you to do. And I'm going to catch you guys next Sunday, 7 o'clock. Later.